Hey there, everybody. This is super exciting today. I want to talk about um, a discovery which I've been looking to solve, a, a, how to, a problem that I've been trying to solve for ages, which is how to get Dorico, which is notation software, and Cubase, which is a DAW, to kind of work in sync. Now, uh, just a little bit like a one-minute rundown background. Dorco is a, is a very new platform for notation, and if you are serious about composing, you probably have worked with or see the advantages of working with notation software. It's a really nice way to, um, to see what's going on in your music, sometimes that, in ways that elude us when we're working in a DAW. It's made by Steinberg. They're the same folks that make Cubase. I've been using Cubase for a long time. It's, it's my favorite DAW. Uh, one I use in all my demos here. And you'd think that both products would just seamlessly integrate. There is a score editor in Cubase. I don't think I'm the only one who would say it's it's really pretty awful as a creative tool. Um, that's my experience. You know, maybe other people have figured it out. I never really have gotten it to be helpful, but Dorico is amazing. Dorico is is just makes notation actually fun, which is crazy, right? So what I really want is uh, to be able to take stuff that I've got going on in Cubase, you know, maybe virtual instruments that I've sketched out, uh, especially some of those native instruments libraries, and I want them uh, to work in Cubase, but then I want to write some string parts or uh, some notated parts in Darko and have be able to see them both and hear them both in real time as I'm working, not have to export from one to the other. That's just a drag. It's a, it kills time and it kills my enthusiasm. It kills my creative flow. So I don't want that. So what I tend to do is work all in Cubase or all in Dorico. And if I work in Cubase, then my creative flow around some of the things that I know about notation are no longer available to me. I like to see the verticality of what I'm recording. I like to see, you know, oh, that that's the note there that's not working in the harmony. Or I like to see, you know, my motifs, uh, the rhythmic motifs. I like to see that there's, you know, I'm, I'm getting the cohesion and consistency that I want. That's so much easier to see in notation. But then in Cubase, you know, you've got effects and I've got the mixer, and I can load up all kinds of instruments, and I've got my template, and there's just a lot of uh, cool stuff that I can do in there. So I want the two to work together. I'll bet if you're watching this video, you're using one or the other or both of these tools, and you want them to work together too. So let's check out what I've got here. Um, I've got Darko in my upper corner here. I got Cubase here behind me. And then over here, sorry, my camera flips me around, right? So it's weird. Uh, over here, I've got my uh, loop back. I'm going to explain how all this goes. And I'm going to show you just quickly how this looks in the real world. So I'm just going to select here. I'm going to hit play in Dorico. And you're going to see that it, it syncs what's happening in Dorico with what's happening here. And you'll hear them both in the playback. So you can see my notation up here. I've got these string parts. I've got this, this French horn thing. And the guitar in the background here is being played using Pick to Nylon, which is uh, one of my favorite libraries from Native Instruments Complete Setup. I love it. Um, it just makes it very easy to put together guitar parts quickly. But then this is exactly the kind of work I like to do where I, you know, I don't want to write out the picked guitar part in notation just because I have to work in Dorico. That's time consuming and totally unnecessary. I love the way that um, my Cubase picked nylon plugin, uh, the native instruments plugin in Cubase. I love the workflow, how I recorded that. As you can see, it's just uh, <laughs> zoom in here. As you can see, you know, it's like super, super simple MIDI. I don't want to have to go and like notate out those parts in Dorico just so that I can hear it all play back together. Okay, so how do I achieve this dream goal? Now, I want to say that 
there were a couple of folks on the Steinberg, um, the Steinberg um, forums. I think their names were. I saw a user Brian Roland. Uh, I learned a lot from from him and a Sampo uh, Kesurinen. I'm sorry if I'm butchering that name. Uh, both of them provided some information on uh, the Steinberg forms that helped me get to this. I didn't feel like the, the, the steps were clearly laid out either by any of the manufacturers of this software or in the, the Steinberg posts. So I thought, hey, what better thing than to make a video about it? So let me check, so let me show you kind of what we're doing here. So the first thing you got to do is you got to set up a virtual MIDI port. And actually, I'll, I'll come back on camera here for a sec. A virtual MIDI port is just what it sounds like. It's a MIDI port, but it's not a physical out in the world. It's in your computer. Now, in uh, on a Mac, this is the I, what's called an IAC driver. And I'm going to show you exactly how to set that up. If you're using Windows, though, um, Windows doesn't have an equiv equivalent thing like the IAC driver built into the operating system. But there's still loads of virtual um, uh, virtual MIDI port softwares available. Back in the day, there was MIDI Yoke. I think there's one called like Loop B. Um, anyway, if you look up Windows um, Windows Virtual MIDI Port, there's like freeware, and if it's paid, it's not going to be expensive. This is a very very straightforward thing, and what it does is it creates a MIDI port, just like any other MIDI port, maybe for your MIDI keyboard or for you know Ableton Push or something that your computer recognizes. Oh, that's somewhere I can send MIDI or get MIDI from, right? This just sets up a virtual one that's just kind of running in the background of your system. And I'm going to do this with IEC because I'm on Mac and it's, it's a very fluid setup. So how do we do it? I'm going to go ahead and uh, you should be able to follow along if you're on a Mac. I am loading up what's called Audio MIDI Setup. And if you don't see this MIDI window, then you go up into your... Uh, Windows menu here, and you would say show MIDI devices, right? That's what you get here, or show MIDI studio. And this is what you get here. So I've got a bunch of MIDI devices in here, but the one that you'll always have, regardless of whether you've got these other things set up, is the IAC driver. I'm going to double click that, and then I get this window right here. Okay, now you need to check this checkbox to enable it. And then you create a port. You can create multiple ports if you want. I've just created one port that is called MTC, and that's for MIDI timecode because that's the way that I'm going to be um, communicating. Okay, so I'm going to close that up. That's how you set up the IAC. Just open up the audio MIDI, bring, open up your IAC driver, make sure you check this checkbox, drive devices online, and then you can add or um, remove ports, rename them, whatever you want to do and you'll be all set, okay? So you need to have this IAC driver and you have to know what it's called. That's the first step. Now we can go into our Darko configuration. The way that I have this set up um, is I have Darko actually creating the MIDI timecode that goes out to Cubase. So Cubase is following um, Darko. But the thing is, there's not actually... Um, there's not actually a straightforward way to just get MIDI timecode directly from Dorico into Cubase. So you need to use this in between, but I'm gonna show you how to do that, okay? So um, the Dorico configuration looks something like this. You open up Dorico and uh, you, know, you need some kind of project open. I've got this dummy project right here. Okay, and you wanna go into the play region or play menu or tab up here, right? You've got Track Inspector VST MIDI, right? Now, normally here under VST MIDI, if you are a Dorico user, you know this is where you have your VST instruments. But one of your VST instruments needs to be this TXL timecode. And it's here under TXL20, under Synth and timecode right there. So where do you get this from? It does not come with Dorico. You need to load it up and let me... Um, let me load that up for you here and show you kind of where that would be. So TXL20.com, that's the web address for their website. And this is what it looks like, okay? You can go here, you can uh, buy it, 
download it and install it and then you restart Dorico and uh, it'll find it. You load it up as a virtual instrument and that opens up this window right here. Okay, so this is your TXL timecode window. So what's going on in here is we need to select It'll, it, when you boot it up for the first time, it'll say no MIDI. You just click on where it says no MIDI and you can select your driver. You can see that it's connecting to some other MIDI ports, uh, but I want to select MTC. And that's, that's just named MTC because it's what I named it back in the IAC driver setup. And then I enable MTC here because I want to send uh, MIDI timecode. And these two light up green. Um, Frames per second, this has to do with if you're working on a film project, you need to set the right film, uh, the frames per second in order for time to be uh, determined correctly. Okay, I'm trying to make this fast because I don't want this video to last forever. So we've got our IEC driver set up or if you're on Windows, a virtual MIDI port and we've got um, Dorico configured, okay? So the next thing is we want to configure Cubase. And this would be, probably you could do this with any DAW. I'm going to show you how to do it with Cubase though. So in Cubase, you start it up, open up a project, and you go to your transport menu up here, right? So there's a transport menu down here, project synchronization setup. And you get this little window, right? And under timecode source, you're going to say MIDI timecode. And my MIDI input is the IAC MIDI driver. And you have to check activate external sync. You can also check this checkbox um, over here in the transport menu at the very bottom, you'll see that it's checked. So if you've set up project synchronization in the past and you just want to kind of quickly enable or disable it, you can do it there. Okay, so we've got our Cubase setup. So right now what we've got is when we hit play in Dorico, it talks to that TXL timecode plugin which sends MIDI timecode over this IAC port to which Cubase is slaving itself. That's how they sync up. However, there's one remaining problem, which is that I can't hear what's coming out of Dorico. I want to hear that in my Cubase session. So how do I do that? I use this software called Loopback. Uh, Loopback is just one option. It's made by a company called um, Rogue Amoeba, they make a bunch of great software for Macs, really. They're, they're very Mac-centric. And I just create a, um, a virtual kind of bus, I guess, that's fed by Dorico and goes out to my uh, virtual bus for Cubase. I'm not really going to get into, you know, the nitty-gritty of how any of these pieces of software work because I, I it would be a super long video and... I'm really just trying to give you the information that someone relatively experienced, an intermediate person, could make sense of what I'm doing here on the screen and figure it out. But if you have any questions, totally post them in the comments and I'll get back to you. This took me a while to figure out. I feel really confident about how it works now. I'm sure I can help you out answering questions. Okay, so what Loopback does, all Loopback does, is it takes audio out of Dorico, it snatches that within my operating system's audio system, and then it sends it to Cubase. And in Cubase, I have a track here that's just set up. It's just an audio track called Darko. And over here, let me have to zoom in a little differently here. Right here, um, I've got my input set to stereo in. And stereo in is the same as what this represents in loopback, right? So I've got Darko essentially going in here so that when I hit play, Back here, I'm going to go ahead and mute my guitar in Cubase because I want to show you that right here in the Dorico meter that this plays, right? So let's let's play it, and we can see we can see the audio coming through. This is the same audio that's up here coming out of Dorico, and it's coming through loopback. You can see it over here. Okay, so again. That should all be self-explanatory, given what I'm presenting here. Um, if you know you're an intermediate user, but if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask because, like I said, I'm totally <laughs> feeling for anybody who wants this setup and is having trouble getting there. It's it's really a game changer for me to be able to do this. My my sincere hope is that one day 
you know, maybe dark 06 or whatever, one day it's, oh, sorry, one day they're going to integrate these two and it's just going to be magic and that's going to be a great thing. But for now, this totally works. Okay. So we've got loopback set up. We've got uh, Dorico set up. We've got our IEC driver or our virtual MIDI. Uh, we've got Cubase slaved to this whole thing. And now I am in Cubase down here. I've got this guitar track here, which is in this um, Native Instruments library, and you can hear it. I'm going to turn off my metronome. So this is just playing kind of like some prefab patterns. And what I wanted to do was I wanted up here to just write some orchestral support for that. Right, so I've got a very basic chord progression. I wanted to write some support and then I add a little timpani, a little boom at the beginning there just to add a little bit of drama. So I wanted all these things to work together and as I'm writing, I wanna just be able to hear it back and hear, you know, is that, is that what I want? But obviously I've got elements in Cubase and I've got elements in Darko and I need them to work seamlessly together. So just a quick final, uh, demonstration here. I love it. I just love the way this works. Hit play. Oops, sorry. I muted my Dorico station. I get it all. It's so beautiful. Oh, and, and here's another really cool thing, which is that I can, of course, apply effects to the Dorico audio channel, right? If I want to put delay, reverb, filtering, whatever on there. I can work with effects in, in Cubase, just like it's an audio track, even though it's being played in real time in Dorico, so that's cool. But there's more to it because I can also, um, I, I, I made a few comments here that I wanted to touch on. I can record the output, right? So let's do, let's just kind of see that. So I'm gonna go ahead, I hit record on this station here. Go ahead, hit record. Now, record is not going to do anything until I hit play because Cubase is slaved to the MIDI time code right now. But when I hit play here in Dorico, you can see that it starts to record and lo and behold, there's my beautiful audio coming out of Dorico into Cubase in real time. Okay. Oh. I love it. I mean, this is just the most amazing thing. Now, in some future uh, lessons, I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, specifically negative delay compensation. So in Cubase, or, or sorry, well, in Cubase, you can do delay compensation, and uh, you can also do delay compensation in uh, Dorico, but it wasn't that clear how to do it in Dorico. I think it's a feature ad that they just put in Dorico 5 this year. Um, so I wanted to do a video on that. So that's going to be next time because this video is already like two or three times as long as I try to like, like my videos to be. Again, please like and subscribe. It really helps surface these videos. YouTube looks at that stuff <laughs> more than anything and decides whether or not my videos are quality. I hope that this video has been super helpful to you. Please uh, feel free to leave a question in the comments. If you have a question, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And please uh, continue to support my channel. Thank you so much. You have a great weekend. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. All right. Bye for now.